Hello, I'm Adam Grizzle, the CEO of Aerospace Fabrications of Georgia. I'm here to present to you the new AFG heat treat facility. I'm going to start by showing you a brief overview of the systems and how they work and finish with a short demonstration of the heat treat equipment. I hope our demonstration leaves you with the desire to do future business with AFG's heat treat facility. Thank you. Our overview begins with the AFG heat treat facility control console. Uh, the full workings of this uh, mechanism are actually uh, explained in further detail in an accompanying document uh, with this video uh, titled the H uh, Heat Treat Facility Overview. This is where the ovens are controlled using uh, proprietary software developed by AFG. Uh, we can perform our monthly, weekly, and daily tasks through this console fully automatically. Next is our drop bottom heat treat oven. <clears throat> and as you can see, we currently have the side cover off simply to uh, demonstrate the functionality for this video. It would typically cover this area. Each of our ovens are fitted with digital field I.O allowing us to control them with uh, a digital computer system uh, or soft PLC. Uh, these are common features to all three of our heat treat and age ovens. Another required feature to all of our ovens, of course, is the high limit controller, which is uh, present on all three ovens. And finally, another common feature to all three ovens is a uh, digital solid state oven coil controller, which allows us to uh, more accurately and precisely control the temperatures and prevent any temperature fluctuation within the ovens at their set points. The primary heat treat oven comes with a glycol quench tank, uh, which is agitated, uh, water only agitated. And it will be demonstrated, uh, or you will be able to see the effects of the agitation during the demonstration. Secondary equipment uh, that complements the heat treat oven are, for one, the heater coils which allow us to heat up the quenchant uh, in case we're doing, uh, for example, uh, heat treating on forgings and so forth which require an elevated uh, temperature level of the quenching. Of course you can't have a heat treat oven without a freezer. Uh, this is a freezer capable of I believe 20 degrees below zero to keep the materials in stasis before a potential heat age operation. Also accompanying the uh, heat treat equipment is a chiller which regulates the quenchant temperature. A stainless steel transfer tank accompanies the heat treat oven as well in order to remove all glycol mixture or quenchant and replace it with water quench only and applications that require such. Finally, an air agitated rinse tank is used to remove any quenchant from part numbers which are attached to our heat treat racks. We have two identical heat age ovens. There's an outside view of one and a view of another with the doors in the open position. And as you may see, all of our ovens, heat age and heat treat, do have thermocouples in all of their zones for monthly uniformity survey tests as well as to perform the weekly accuracy tests. Next will be a demonstration of a heat treat cycle. 
and how an operator would perform this cycle from the control console. We would first choose the heat treat oven controls. Next, choose the alloy for which he needs to heat treat. We would then choose the material form, clad or bare. And finally, choose the material thickness for which the parts consist. Finally, the operator will hit the start cycle button. A series of warnings will come up making sure that the operator has taken the appropriate precautions including setting the high limit controller as well as placing the ammonium fluorite into the system if required. We'll now break until the end of the heat treat cycle to demonstrate the unload procedure. Once the system reaches the appropriate set point, the system will automatically count down for the desired cycle. Our heat treat oven has a 6.85 second quench delay time, which will be demonstrated shortly. the appropriate quench cycle, the system will bring the basket up to an unload position so the operator can unload the parts being This would conclude a typical heat treat cycle and the operator would remove the parts, place them on the rinse rack, which would then be lowered into the water agitated rinse tank, or air agitated rinse tank. Next, I'll demonstrate a typical heat age cycle. The operator would simply open the doors, load the parts into the racks, close the doors, proceed to the control console, choose the appropriate alloy and temper, and the system will automatically configure the appropriate heat age cycle. As with the heat treat cycle, the operator would simply choose the oven for which he wishes to uh, heat age. Choose the appropriate alloy from the menu. Choose the material form, clad or bare. Choose the temper selection depending on a single stage or a two stage heat age cycle the system will get set. The operator presses start cycle 
acknowledges the warning for the high limit controller. And the oven then begins its heat age cycle. At the completion of a heat age cycle, the operator can either manually and is prompted to manually remove the parts from the age oven. Or if the system is running unattended, the exhaust at the top will actually open, turn all the heaters off, inject cool air into the system, removing all of the hot air in the oven so that the parts can actually be removed the following working day.